There's a word from the Lord, and we have been dealing with a series called the five T's of stewardship. The five T's of stewardship. In part one, we talked about time and trust. We talked about time and trust. That God gives us time on this earth, and we are to be good stewards of that time. And God puts in trust certain things that God desires for us to do and manifest, and we are to be good stewards of that trust. Uh, this evening, we want to talk about talent. We've been preaching about that for quite some time over the months, that God gives us or invests in us or imbues in us certain talents that are to be used to His glory, uh, to edify and build the kingdom, but also to inspire, to encourage, and empower each other. So God gives us talents so that we can be good stewards of them. We're going to talk about that this evening. And then on Sunday, when we come back together, we'll talk about part three, the temple, and of course, the treasure. The temple, and of course, treasure. The five T's to which you time, trust, talent, temple, and treasure. Our scriptural reference this evening is Genesis chapter 6, a very familiar passage that we want to spotlight a few uh, interesting uh, situations. Genesis 6, verses 8 through 22. Genesis 6, verses 8 through 22. And I take the pleasure of reading this uh, to and for you. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God, and Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jacob. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the evil for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make room to the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its breadth, 50 cubits. And its height, 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a cubit above and set the door of the ark inside. Make it with lower, second, and third decks. For behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, in which is the breath of life under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall die. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall come into the earth, you, your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives with you. And of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every sort into the earth. To keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female, of the birds according to their kind, of the animals according to their kinds, of every creeping thing in the ground according to its kind. Two of every sort shall come in to you to keep them alive. Also take with you every sort of food that is eaten and store it up. It shall serve as food for you and for them. Noah did. He did all that God commanded. Verse 22 again, Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him. I'm often perplexed by this passage in the Gospel in the Bible, in the Old Testament, because it often depicts where we are in life now. That there is violence all over, that there's corruption all over, and certainly without pointing fingers and without naming names, there's so much evil all over the place. And I pray that God will find each of us to be blameless and righteous as he found Noah. I love this notion because blameless and righteous does not mean that, that, that Noah sinless. Noah was a sinner, but he loved God and was obedient to God's word. And in his obedience, God found him to be righteous and blameless. Noah loved God. Noah, Noah obeyed God. Noah followed God's directives. So God was able to find him righteous and blameless, even in the midst of all corruption, 
and violence. So God says, no, because of your stewardship, because of your stewardship of all the things that I've given you, the time, the trust, the temple, the treasure, the talent, I want to use you to manifest the things that I want to bring into existence. No, I imagine it's like many of us. God reminds you, pick me out of all the folks that you put in church. Why did you chose me? Why did you choose me? And God says, because I've invested in you certain things that will bring to fruition the things that I need to occur. And Noah says, whoa, 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 what can I do that will save the entire earth? Save the entire What can I do? And God says, well, listen, the things that you need, you are in. There's a famous passage in the Old Testament that says that everything that you ever need was given to you before you knew. God knows the very hairs on your head. God knows because God created you for a purpose and for a reason. So Noah says, well, what? Can you use me? And so God makes it very plain. I want you to build an ark of a certain good. I want you to build an ark of a certain size, with certain levels, certain purposes in those levels. I want you to collect your family. I want you to collect two of every species that exists, two of every type of food that exists. And I want you to put them in the ark. And I want you to do it when I say do it. In verse 22, which I love, Noah did this. He did all that God commanded. And we say, what does this have to do with talents? Well, I just imagine in my theological sound imagination that Noah has some carpentry skills. Because God would not have asked Noah to build a huge ark the size of a football field if Noah didn't have some carpentry skills. And Noah was a builder. So Noah had some talents in terms of giftedness, in terms of building. But not only that, Noah had some engineering talents. Because he had to figure out the size and the scale, the shape and the structure. Noah has some architectural design skills and talents there that God had manifested in his life early on so that he could understand the length and the breadth and the width and how to structure it so that the third floor didn't cave into the second floor, the second floor didn't cave into the first floor with all those elephants and giraffes and lions and bears and all such. Noah has some mathematical or statistical skills that he developed. He understood his he knew how to add, he knew how to subtract. These are things that God imbued in him early on to know that when it came time for the heart, that no one would be able to do this. No one has some administrative skills, some, some logistical detail skills, because he had to figure out how to bring two by two and where to put it. How to bring his children and his children's wives together. How to orchestrate this person and make sure that you assess and account for it two by two and the food that you need. Noah has some managerial skills, some organizational behavior skills, because God knew that it was going to be a challenge to get those two bears in there, those two lions in there. The lions smell the bears, and the giraffe smells the zebra, and they want to go at it. Noah knew how to do it, when to do it. Noah has some project management skills and some assessment skills. God created Noah with all these talents was he? God even gave him all some charisma. Because I can only imagine as he was telling his sons, it's time to build a heart. How in the world did you get them to buy in to such a big project that doesn't make sense? God gave Noah the talents up front in order to manifest those things that God needed to have. But God wanted to have. And so in verse 22, I love this. Noah did this. He did all that God commanded. Noah was a good steward. He was a good steward of his talent. I would imagine like many of us, Noah didn't even realize that he had all his talents. He was probably a simple God doing simple things. Just spending time with God and knowing that when God told him to move right, he moved right. When God told him to move left, he moved left. When God told him to do this in his household and with his family, he did it. Just a simple God, he's trying to follow God's command. But here God says, I want you to do this major task. And Noah says, well, with what? And Noah says, with the talent that I have invested in you, that I have viewed in you from your very beginning. And Noah didn't say, well, no, if, if I have all that, then I need to go make me a million dollars doing some other stuff. Noah said, God, if this is what you would have me to do, then I will be a good steward of these talents, and I will do 
knew exactly what you said. Verse 22, Noah did this. He did all that God commanded. Noah was a good steward of God's talents. He did it to glorify our God. He did it so that there would be a future kingdom of God. He did it for us. Because once God wiped out the earth with the flood, they re the earth. And from those seeds, thus we come. So Noah had a huge undertaking to accomplish it. If he said no, who knows what it had Noah did it for God. He did it for the kingdom. But he also did it for his family. Because he understood that by his righteousness and by his blamelessness, he was able to bring his family together and the entire family was saved. How do you fit in this picture? <coughs> what talents has God given you? How do you work in God's framework? How do you fit in? Has God challenged you to do something that is out of the ordinary, that is somewhat confusing and perplexing and weird, as I said? Has God called you to do something that no one else might ever stand, but you. Has God invested in you some talents that folks don't even know about? Do you have the courage to manifest what God has put in you to do? Do you find yourself responsible enough to step forward and say, God, I hear you, I'm going to do it? Do you love God to the point where when God says to move you, do you love God's people enough that you become a good steward of the talents that God gives you to benefit, to edify God's kingdom? But most of all here at Community of Love, are you willing to use your talents to inspire, to encourage, and to equip one another? Are you willing to bring those things that God has invested in you to you so that each of us can grow and grow together? You might be the seed. And I pray that God may provide the water and the fertilizer so that you might see. Not only for your own sin, but for those that are around you. So that not only that your testimony will inspire and encourage each of us, but that those things that God has given you will help to equip what it is that God has challenged us to do in this work that we call ministry. The five T's of stewardship. Time, trust, talent, temple, treasure. What are you doing with these things that God has provided you? And will you use them to God's glory for the edification of the kingdom and to inspire, encourage, and to equip one another? The five T's.